Gentleness begins with a humble acknowledgement of wrongdoing and a willingness to turn back to God. We see Jacob making a significant decision. He instructs his household and all who were with him to get rid of these foreign gods that they had with them. This is a clear admission of wrongdoing. They had been carrying these idols with them, these false gods with them all along. And Jacob in his wisdom and obedience to God recognized this as wrong. He doesn't just recognize it, but he acts on it. He doesn't make excuses or try to justify the presence of these idols. Instead, he humbly acknowledges the wrongdoing and he takes steps to correct it. This is a powerful lesson for us. Oftentimes, we carry around our own idols. These may not be physical statues or figurines, but they are things that we put before God in our lives. They could be our jobs, our relationships, our ambitions, our hobbies, or even our own comfort and convenience. And just like Jacob, we need to recognize these idols for what they are, distractions. They are distractions from our relationship with God, roadblocks to our spiritual growth, and barriers in our obedience to God's commands. This is another important lesson for us because it's not simply enough for us to recognize our idols. We need to take action. We need to get rid of the things that are keeping us from fully committing our lives to God. This may involve making difficult decisions and sacrifices, but as followers of Christ, we are called to deny ourselves and take up our cross. Our acknowledgement of wrongdoing should not just be a, a mental or verbal exercise, it should be accompanied by a change in our behavior. We should be willing to admit our mistakes and ask for forgiveness, not just from God, but also from those who we have wronged. We should use our mistakes as opportunities to grow and to help others grow. Humble acknowledgement of wrongdoing is not just about admitting mistakes. It's about changing our behavior and being open and honest about our sins. It is about leading by example and using our mistakes as opportunities for growth. We find ourselves in a place of transformation. Jacob having acknowledged his wrongdoing as he's now in a position to cultivate a new quality within himself and his household. This quality is gentleness, one that is often overlooked in our fast-paced, competitive world. Yet, it is a quality that God values and desires to see in us. Gentleness begins with a humble acknowledgement of wrongdoing and a willingness to turn back to God. Gentleness, as we see it in the Bible, it is not a sign of weakness or passivity. It is a strength that comes from a deep understanding of God's love and grace. It is a response to God's mercy, a way of living that reflects the heart of our Heavenly Father. And in Genesis 35, we see Jacob beginning to cultivate this quality in his interactions with his family and God. Jacob's gentleness is evident in the way that he speaks to his household. He doesn't command them to get rid of their foreign God, he asks them to do so. He doesn't dictate their actions, he invites them to join him in worshiping the one true God. This is a subtle but significant shift in Jacob's leadership style, a shift that reflects a growing gentleness in his heart. This gentleness is also evident in Jacob's interaction with God. When God tells Jacob to go up to Bethel and build an altar, Jacob doesn't argue or resist, he simply obeys. He doesn't question God's command or demand an explanation. He trusts God's wisdom and follows his guidance. This is a sign of a gentle spirit, a spirit that's willing to submit to God's authority and to yield to his will. The Hebrew word for gentleness used in the Bible is anava. This word carries the connotation of humility, meekness, and a willingness to submit to God's authority. It is used in several other passages in the Bible, including Numbers 12 verse 3, where Moses is described as the most humble man on earth. And Psalm 45 verse 4, where, where the Messiah is portrayed as riding forth victoriously in humility and truth. And both of these passages, as in Genesis 35, gentleness is portrayed as a desirable quality, a sign of spiritual maturity and godly character. It is not a weakness, but a strength. It is not a liability, but an asset. It is not something to be shunned, but something to be sought after and cultivated. Now, as we look at Jacob's example, we are challenged to cultivate gentleness in our own lives. This doesn't mean becoming passive or weak. It means becoming more like Christ, who was gentle and humble in heart. It means treating others with kindness and respect, even when they don't deserve it. 
It means trusting God's wisdom and submitting to his authority even when it doesn't make sense. Cultivating gentleness means being patient with ourselves and with others. It means recognizing that we are all works in progress, that we all make mistakes, and that we all need grace. In the tapestry of our relationship, gentleness is the thread that binds us together, weaving a pattern of love, respect, and mutual understanding. It is the soft whisper in the midst of clamor, the gentle touch in a world of harshness, the calm in the presence of storm and chaos. Gentleness is the language of love spoken in dialect of the divine. So how do we harness the power of gentleness and these biblical truths so that we can have it be a guiding path in our relationships? See, in the Bible, gentleness is not passive quality, but an active force that transforms relationships. It is the catalyst that turns strangers into friends, enemies into allies, acquaintances into brothers and sisters in Christ. Research conducted by Dr. Robert Emmons, a leading scholar in the field of positive psychology, supports this biblical truth. His studies have shown that individuals who exhibit gentleness in their interactions tend to have a healthier, more fulfilling relationships. They are more likely to experience deep connections with others, to resolve conflicts effectively, and to foster an environment of mutual love, respect, and understanding. In the words of respected Christian writer C.S. Lewis, love is not affectionate feeling, but a steady wish for the loved person's ultimate good as far as it can be obtained. You see, this quote beautifully captures the essence of gentleness in relationships. It is a steady wish, a constant endeavor, a relentless pursuit of the other person's ultimate good. There must be also consistency in gentleness. Gentleness is not a sporadic act, but a consistent practice. It is not about a fleeting emotion, but a steadfast state of being. It is not a random act of kindness, but a deliberate lifestyle of love. And in the Bible, we see numerous examples of individuals who consistently exhibited gentleness in their relationships. They understood that gentleness was not a switch to be turned on and off at will, but a light to be kept burning brightly at all times. They recognized that gentleness was not a mask to be worn in certain situations, but a face to be shown to the world at all times because gentleness begets gentleness. And when we treat others with gentleness, we invite them to respond in kind. When we approach others with gentleness, we create a space for them to reciprocate with gentleness. Studies have shown that couples who treat each other with gentleness are more likely to have long-lasting, satisfying relationships. They are more likely to communicate effectively, to resolve their conflicts amicably, and to foster a deep sense of respect. As we reflect on our relationships, let us strive to be gentle in our words. Let us strive to be gentle in our actions, in our thoughts. Let us strive to be consistent in our gentleness, to be reciprocal in our gentleness, to leave an enduring impact with our gentleness. Let us strive not in our own strength, but in the strength of our Lord and Savior, who is the source of all gentleness. Let us strive not for our own glory, but for the glory of God, who is the embodiment of gentleness. And let's remember, it's not about being perfect. It's about being willing to come before God, just as Jacob did, with a humble and contrite heart. It's about letting go of the things that don't serve us or honor God and embracing the grace that he so freely gives to us. It's about treating each other with gentleness, even when it's hard, and applying the biblical truths to our relationships, even when it's uncomfortable. You see, God's love for us is unchanging, and his grace is unending. He's with us in our struggles, He's with us in our victories, and He's with us in every moment in between. The Christian life, it starts with grace, it must continue with grace, and it ends with grace. Remember, gentleness is a humble acknowledgement of wrongdoing and a desire and a willingness to turn back to God.